Hello everyone. Now we are here at Ferropolis. Um, as you know, we switched from Dessau um, and actually we are here because um, the new European Bauhaus festival is happening, taking place in Brussels at the moment, but all over the EU. And we basically have a meeting of uh, the Bauhaus festival and the Melt festival, as you can see here. We are more or less in the relaxed uh, session. It's the last session of the day. Um, and it's, it's actually the main session in terms of the topic because we want to talk about transformation, the culture of transformation, how can cultural events strengthen the, the structural change. And uh, this is the perfect place to do this because um, here is a former uh, lignite uh, area and we have big excavators on the, on the festival area which look great uh, during night and, and when, the, when music is playing. And, and I'm happy to have um, uh, guests here from uh, the area, but also from more uh, far away. Uh, first of all, um, the mayor of Grevenheinichen, where Ferropolis is uh, situated and where the Met Festival is taking place, Enrico Schilling. Then we have uh, the mayor of Weißwasser, Thorsten Pöch, a city in the east of, uh, more east uh, of, of Germany, but has um, the same situation in terms of structural change. You are also area where you have uh, brown coal. And uh, until 2038 at the moment, um, it's, it's supposed to phase out. And this means new um, challenges. Um, um, that were already in place um, after the wall came down because uh, a lot of people moved away, um, the, the economy uh, shrunk um, and s similar situations in, under different conditions hopefully uh, will take place now. And then I'm happy to say hello to Julius Kranefuß from Weißwasser or uh, like in the, in the Weißwasser um, team that, that were, is visiting these days um, and you're actually thinking about doing your own festival, no? I mean, we will he hear later about it. You are also arch architect, um, where we have the intersection um, with the new European Bauhaus. And um, I'm happy to welcome as well Luca Lucatelli um, from Fascination Festival, right? Uh, and, photogra and photographer, right? And we have Julia Nimon from Good Life, who are um, organizing the, the Melt Festival. No? So I would like to start um, with, the, with the mayors here. Um, and when it comes to, to structural change, um, um, Mr. Schilling, uh, Enrico, um, how, how um, developed the, the whole festival thing here in, in Grevenheinichen? Um, how did it um, make the development easier maybe um, in, in the last years? Uh, what, what can you tell us from a, a city perspective? At first, I want to tell you all that it's a pleasure for me to be here and have you all together uh, after the two years where our no music is here and so it's colorful to welcome you back at Ferropolis. Um, Griffenheinichen uh, in former time was a city with brown coal mining and in the neighborhood there was a big power plant um, after the opening the world's greatest power plant with um, uh, 860 megawatt power at 1915 so it was in the in the 19 year, 90 years 1959 when the brown coal mining was closed and also the power plant was closed for a lot of people uh, they look for a new perspective uh, what will the future bring us a lot of young people are gone away and a lot of people that will uh, stay here said we have to um, we have to save the industrial culture of brown coal mining and also of the power plant. That's why Ferropolis was created. And now in, in this time, uh, it's a pleasure for us, for our city, that uh, 
20 or 30,000 people comes here every year uh, to the festival. They bring a colorful life in the city. They bring music and, and good vibrations to the city. It's Sometimes it's a little bit a problem. Young people in the night when they are on party, it's a little bit loud. So the older people call the so-called Lärm hotline. Uh, <laughs> but it's also no problem. Uh, for us, it's, it's a part uh, to save uh, the industrial culture of uh, the, the brown coal mining. And it's also a part to see how, how it's changing when a brown coal mining is full of water, it becomes a lake. And after this, uh, tourism started, also the festival season and everything. So you can you can see uh, how the, the, the times are changing, what the, how the past was and what the future will bring us. And so it's uh, uh, every time again, a very interesting uh, feeling, and I think it will be uh, uh, also in the future um, a, a big part. Uh, the festivals, in this time we have the Melt Festivals, and the next weeks we have two others. Uh, it's a big part to, to help to, to change, because you have to, to finance the infrastructure and everything what's here around us, and that's a part of it to make it complete. And it's probably economically um, also important, no? Or, I mean, if all the yeah, yes, the, the a, lo a lot of are here. a lot of a lot of people not only are working here, but also a lot of companies uh, before the festival starts that, that create the area that uh, make the electricity or the water uh, and something like this. It's it's also a very important uh, part for the for the uh, in German. I don't know. It's Kaufkraft, also mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. the financial uh, situation mm -hmm. of the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, I mean, industrial culture, it's also a topic in, in the south of um, Saxony-Anhalt and sites where we have a lot of places like this and the question how to use it to attract people. And I know that the people from Weißwasser are working on their own festival, kind of. Um, uh, Thorsten Pilch, tell us, what is the, the background here? What, what do you think, aim to do with, with this? Yeah, we have... Um their own ideas um, to a festival um, and we are here with 20 people from our town and want to learn from Melt, from the people here, from the mayor, um, from other persons um, and um, we hope um, of the same results like here in Krefenheinigen to make a better place uh, for the people uh, in our area. Also our town lost um, 60, over 60 percent of the population um, in the last 30 years and um, our wish is um, more people come back or come in our area and uh, find a new home. Um, we have a beautiful landscape. We have two, uh, three UNESCO labels and um, this is a, uh, there are good uh, opportunities uh, to live in our um, area. And now in the last years and in this future we hope of new um, new places to work in, in our region, um, but um, we know we lost a lot of um, opportunities to work in the brown coal um, industry. industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is uh, difficult, but we uh, we have a plan. We 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 hope it is better as in the time in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And um, with a festival, we hope with culture. Um, People come back, people say, oh, it's uh, good people live where and um, maybe it's a place for me yeah. for the future. And, and I think it's also um, a thing about the rural area and city. I mean, a lot, a lot of times the argument for people to stay in the city is actually, okay, I have more cultural uh, offerings um, and um, of course you never will have the same in a, in a rural area, but to have some glimpse, some highlights maybe like a festival, to say, okay, uh, you get people from outside, um, but also from from the area as well, um, if they benefit as a visitor or also in, in economic terms. No, That's correct. So, so, okay, thank you, thank you for that, uh, Luca. I would uh, like to talk to you. You uh, do photography about uh, future. It's a topic in in your work, no? And I mean, um, I'm also doing uh, communication in in structural change here in in Saxony-Anhalt, and it's often the time that, that you have to challenge how to 
make the future tangible? What do you show the people? How do you make them believe, okay, something is going to change after such structural breaks as we had them here or, or at, at other times? What, what do you think? Yeah, um, yeah, as you said, I'm actually exploring uh, new ways uh, to live in our planet since uh, more than 15 years, which means going around the world and discover situation like this one, which is uh, totally unexpected. And uh, so basically uh, what I do is uh, looking at the present to try to unleash a future so um, because people doesn't know about you know uh, this kind of situation like the the Feropolis and uh, and and it's so futuristic to see people dancing in a coal mine so it means like we are putting the time mm -hmm. uh, you know forward on 30 or 40 years hopefully and so actually I'm connecting dots of this kind of stories and trying to spread the message to big medias like uh, National Geographic magazine or New York Times and, and many others. And, and I'm here today uh, because I'm creating an art show uh, around circular economy. And mm -hmm. there's nothing more circular than uh, reusing uh, such a place to, uh, for an entertainment uh, uh, festival. So that's, uh, that's the point, yeah. And I mean, that's interesting. We talked about throughout the day about circular economy in the, in the building sector um, because uh, renovation is one key point also of the German government who says in, in terms of the new European Bauers Initiative, we have to look at how to renovate the, the structure that we have and, and how to use and also material wise. So throughout the day, we talked about which materials, uh, for instance, in the area of sites, we have bricks, we have wood. Uh, that we can use uh, and also we, we had some sessions where we talked about sugar as a uh, building material so I was working in coffee before and uh, now all the plastic um, uh, coffee tabs you have are made of stuff that were already uh, milk uh, uh, milk acid or, or sugar for instance and yeah actually circular economy is coming from the past you know we, we didn't throw anything before it was just like uh, the day before yesterday and we lost that attitude in one point we have invented another way to become uh, wealthier. Uh, in, we have invented linear economy. And now we are trying, coming back to, you know, uh, get back to a circle. And, uh, but I think it's easy. It's, it's there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, not, we just need to remember that and, and get back to it and, uh, and create things from, and not wasting all of uh, all of w we are wasting you know and uh, so i'm i'm actually positive because i'm seeing a lot of things happening in the world and it will come up uh, in the f in the nearly future yeah. and and we we also talked throughout the day about crafts i mean not only materials but crafts that are situated here so how can people be empowered to do something about the environment because in the new european bowels it's about how do we live in the future which in terms of buildings, but also like how do we interact, no? And um, yeah, and I, I think that that can help. Um, Julius, from from an architectural perspective, how um, does this whole circular thing is is already? I mean, if if there is a client, for instance, are is there a change of mind when it comes to climate neutrality, for instance, in building, or do we have to have a big step there uh, happening? Um, recently, you find uh, a lot of movement in those um, state of mind, uh, especially when it comes down to new building and, and bigger investments. If you look at a smaller sector, I think it, it changed its way in the last 10 years, how you look at it from, from a perspective of, I want to be progressive in change and, and uh, environmental action um, to a very normal and, and state of um, awareness where, where everyone is considering uh, the possibilities and, and during the last period, half year, um, there's, there's almost too much going on uh, at the same time. The urgency, the pressure, um, everything uh, accumulates to, uh, to a big, and a big uh, mindset of uh, looking at new ways, um, possibilities and, and uh, solutions towards uh, circularity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and you are 
Thorsten, as far as I understood? No? Um, well, what is the combination, like the role then? How did you get together or was it by, by coincidence in this? Um, no, uh, Thorsten um, and we are developing uh, a carbon neutral uh, modern um, city um, part of Weißwasser, uh, which tries to uh, accumulate or um, approximately uh, connect a lot of new technologies uh, together with um, old fashioned and uh, common ways of building to uh, set a, a new standard in, in urban planning and housing and energy efficiency. And um, we came together during a uh, coincidence, uh, which uh, almost is now almost over a year ago. And ever since we're making amazing progress um, together with the city, together with the whole uh, uh, governmental area and the Saxony government as well. And it's, it's a fantastic uh, collaboration uh, where we really want to A, set an uh, in incension, incentive, I'm sorry, uh, for also uh, what Thorsten in the beginning said to re-establish the city as a as a point of being and and for people as an attraction uh, but also the mindset of um, creating something new a new starting point uh, together with the um, with the enhanced architecture or um, let's say modern ways of of thinking about living and uh, coexisting and um, yeah we try to simply uh, as uh, it was said in the beginning, find uh, equate uh, answers to the problems uh, of the world. The region, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, this is actually uh, the case why we combine structural change and the new European Bauhaus Initiative here in saxony anhalt because there's a lot of investment in buildings and, and concrete, so to say, in, in terms of the structural change, which has to do with how the money can be used. Um, but then to take it on another level, no? Um, because, for instance, here in, in saxony anhalt we have a consortium for the, the uh, initiative of the new European Bauhaus where you have a science, you have a Fraunhofer Institute, for instance, we have the uh, Stiftung Bauhaus Dessau um, there, and then try to figure out how to um, push the transformation on the one hand, so in building, but also cultural-wise. So how do we get this shift, not only build one time new and climate neutral uh, buildings, but then also that people behave in a way that we can live on the resources we, we have. You know? um, yeah. So Julia, um, you, you are from, from Good Life, no? Um, your uh, Good Life, is as I said, is organizing the, the festival here. Um, uh, what would you say is, um, like if, if cities, for instance, are looking for uh, places to do new festivals, like what, what are the criteria you would say for, for new festival areas? Yeah, um, first of all, also, I'm very happy to see everybody is back here after two years of having to pause the festival, and it's so beautiful to see everybody dance again. Um, so, basically, what I, um, what I think is and what we also learned in the past two days after the workshop with the citizens of Weißwasser is to include everybody in this process because the process itself is also a transformation mm -hmm. and it can um, inspire the citizens not only to create a festival but maybe something more, um, something sustainable because a festival can be sustainable but it's more a temporary event but around it there's so much um, going on and I think this is important to keep in mind so in this process of organizing a festival inside a city always speak to the community think about your resources but also be open-minded to invite actors from all around and um, I think this is very important in the transformation process to be open and um, not to see the bad side of the challenge, but yeah, the good side. Actually, we have inside the situation oftentimes, so there's a lot of cultural things going on and the mayor there is pushing it a lot. And of course, all of the older people say, so what is this going to be? Because 
actually the the jobs in the in the brown coal mining uh, they are industry workers they earn good money often they are engineers um, and that's what they're actually looking for so the question often is so how can we replace this industrial work with uh, culture and, and creativity uh, economy so that's um, that's a question that we always get and I think it's about as you said showing the opportunities and and also involve the people no? I mean, we are here at the Ferropolis, so the sustainable part of the festival. Can you tell us a, bit, a little bit about, more about this year? Yeah, I mean, of course, um, I think climate change is one of the biggest transformations that we are uh, uh, facing Same. right now. Mm -hmm. So um, as a festival, we we also um, pollute the environment and but we also have the responsibility to gain attention for this very important topic. Um, and we have a very interested audience here. So we chose to yeah, just uh, give different actors around this Ferropolis the opportunity to get to know each other, to present very important topics, not only in terms of environmental sustainability, but also social sustainability. And just to create awareness is very important. And of course, it's not only about this, but also about reducing waste. So um, being uh, just responsible, not only here in Ferropolis, but also on site, um yeah stuff like that yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. why we are here interesting yeah so torsten when you hear this like the sustainable part on the festival i mean you talked about and thought about festival a lot the, the last days um is this something in terms of cultural change if you you get the people from your area go to the festival but also use it a bit to to have this change in mind so could you imagine have some sustainable area as well to learn about new practices, about circular economy, and so on? Well, how, how would you think, I mean, you are close to your people, no? How would you think uh, would resonate the, uh, with, the, with your community? Um, it's, it's very important um, to learn from, from the thoughts, um, from, 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 the, from the past. And um, um, I, I think I, we are of the right way um, for the festival. Um, um, a lot of things what we hear, see, uh, we have also within our minds, and mm -hmm. we we take um, these ideas um, to vice versa, and some ideas more, um, and and this is a um, uh, very very good uh, process um, for for me, for for my thoughts, for um, for for the people from vice versa yeah. uh, here. So. Thank you for uh, an all on good life and all the people here uh, for this opportunities um, to learn so so much and and to connect us um, and this is uh, very important uh, this connection uh, from organizations from people um, with uh, we have one um, uh, one thing in our minds and uh, we we must uh, do something with the uh, climate mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm here in the small area um, and the same for the big world here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Enrico, how is it in your community, in your city, is sustainability uh, a topic like, or is it is it more, because we often also in the in the coal phase out, this is something that is imposed from the outside a little bit. You know, Germany decides, okay, we want to achieve the 2% the goal of Paris and that's why we have to go out of coal. And then the people here say, well, again, we have to uh, carry the burden of it. Um, so, so how is it in the in the community? Is uh, I mean, you have this um, this change a little bit behind you, but um, is it a topic, or is is there a long way to go that that people are um, convinced to, I don't know, use more sustainability in their life? It's a it's a long way, but it's also a, a process that is going step by step. Uh, so when you look around. Uh, this is a, a beautiful area, uh, a lot of green here around us, and it's called the Dübener Heide. It's a natural park, and the people in the natural park, in the, in the, in the, in the forest where, where they live uh, 100 years ago, they know I have to 
plant a new tree when I want to cut up an older one. An older one. So yeah. that's yeah. why that's the thinking of the yeah. people. Yeah. And so in, in new times, the, the thinking is changing. Now it's not the tree, it's electricity, it's it's water, it's it's uh, oil or gasoline, uh, uh, and, and all these things. Um, it, it's a process of changing. Um, and uh, I don't know how... Uh, who was said it? Uh, you have uh, to to take the people on this way with you. Uh, you have to show what is the um, Bene the, could be the benefit. Yeah, the, what could the benefit for them uh, for themselves, and then they will go uh, their their own way. And I think that's the most important thing that uh, people know what they are doing and they know what uh, the the uh, the way could be for the future. I mean, we talk about uh, a lot th this day about participation as well. So, if you if you take the the three pillars of the new European Bauhaus, it's uh, like aesthetics on the one hand, sustainability, but also inclusion. So, to take people in affordable houses, for instance, no, and and uh, how to actually do it. But it's it's not that easy in in a way that it's not a natural topic uh, to discuss for for the people, no, and 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 to get them in. Um, so um, maybe again to the to the mayors, like, um, do we have the feeling that that your people want to participate in in um, in structuring your community, or is it like, let's see what the what the government is doing, and uh, maybe we find it good or not? What, what would you say? I would say it's it's easy to say, but it's not easy to do, <laughs> uh, and and that's the most important thing to do it and to do it every day again and uh, to to go on the way. And when the thinking is in in the mind that uh, everybody knows we have to go this way, and I want to be part of it, then it's it's the best for a good start. Uh, and so we uh, uh, do it together. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we have no chance. I think. And, I mean, I could imagine that as a mayor, you get a lot of like requests. I mean, you know a lot of people from your city probably, and you get calls. I, I think, and this is kind of participation as well, no, Thorsten? Or yeah, it's um, it's very different. Um, um, the the government said um, you must take the people in the process, and um, when you do. A conference, the same people come every day, yeah? yes, yes. the same 10 people. Um, yeah. And um, it's it's difficult, but um, we must do this. Um, we must, um, we, the people... The people are the future in the in the in the cities in the in the villages, and we we must do this process together. Yeah, this is, is, it's, yeah, it's I mean, we, we do it from from for them actually, you know. Uh, but it's important to do it also with them, um, and and uh, to take them. But sometimes you have to, uh, p yeah, really take their hand and and also um, have offerings that are uh, easy accessible. No, I mean, not everyone is going to a stage or to a conference and speak up. No, you need uh, maybe uh, um, a very low barriers uh, on this part. Yeah. Um, especially in this case, uh, what we have here in, in Weißwasser, um, the the participation uh, part here was always very close, and we were very um, strongly connected, a with the politics uh, and the the governmental part, uh, but also um, with all the people we were talking about. We always had. Um, I don't want to say random, but uh, a couple of different people from different um, backgrounds in, in every discussions, uh, only as listeners or participants as well. And uh, today, uh, this this weekend, we really uh, were facing a major step forward to participation with this effort to really start a festival, which was initially an idea by, by us as the developers and architects, but we wanted it to... Uh, create um, the spirit and the change of the spirit within the city and with it, with the people. And um, as a fact, people are really uh, interested and they want to participate. And at the same time, maybe this is a hint to politics, um, they, they sometimes don't really believe when you say, okay, we do it unless they really have have their hands on it and really can uh, make the change and be part of it. And, and uh, we hope that uh, despite all the very big topics from Energiewende we are facing here, that, that this uh, will be 
uh, a major uh, project uh, in urban planning uh, in a social aspect. Mm. So, you, you, yeah, what do you think? Could, could it be a way on a festival, for instance, to do like participation workshops? I mean, that if you if you uh, get people that have free time, more or less, no. Um, think about um, exchange ideas. Is, is could could it be a part in a, in a festival, or is it already developing kind of workshop formats? Yeah, of course. I mean, um, people come here to party, but they also come here because they want to be inspired. But they also participate and bring their own ideas and personality. And I think um, for us. This is becoming a new um, branch, not only providing music, but also creating spaces for discussions and debating and also for scientific um, communication. So in all our upcoming festivals, this will be an important part. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Luca, you said um, uh, uh, before um, uh, that resonated with me, Like, um, if you want to um, paint a picture of the future, you take something that is there and then you put uh, imagination to it, no? And, and this has something to do with cultural transformation as well, from my point of view. It's like, like how are uh, images reproduced? Um, and for instance, we had a project here with the, with the art um, university where the students were also exploring the area and, and also take pictures from the past uh, to see How does the language actually evolve? So, because in former times, for instance, showing a, um, a, like a, a tower of a brown coal um, electricity power plant was great because this was the new area and it, it really looked like heaven or it was depicted like that. Um, so, uh, fr from from your point of view, what is um, What what can that bring into the future when we when we look at older pictures maybe and, and reproduce them, um, yeah, and I also think, uh, maybe maybe to add um, um, all the people at least here in Germany if you put a windmill there uh, like electricity windmill everyone seems to hate them although they seem to be the future in terms of energy production no? so how do we get this this image as it was there before uh, and with the power plants to more sustainability as well. So how is sustainability not perceived as I cannot consume anymore or I must um, I forgive this or that, uh, but that it actually is the future? I think actually basically is a, is a kind of loop, you know, we are into because as you said, coal, was not invented from, you know, some Martian, you know. It was just like the solution of that time because we need to to solve uh, actual problems and coal was the technology to do that. And here in Germany, I photographed a lot for National Geographic Day and a Givendi program, for example, and there was like tower to put the population in front of this amazing technology and nu nuclear power station was the same. So now we are talking about wind turbines, mm -hmm. but no one knows exactly what's going to happen in the future with all those wind turbines in the North Sea, um, and so on, you know. So uh, in my perspective, is um, I love the fact that we are always trying to find the latest technology to solve our problems, But the cultural transformation, we have to accept that has to go into our brain first mm -hmm. and not in technology. So mm -hmm. it's very important and I think it's a great occasion we have now because climate change is showing the face, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's very important that we accept the fact that there's no, you know, shortcut or tricks, you know, we need to change inside of ourselves and bring solution, first of all, coming from, you know, something wider in our brain, so not the latest things that we need, you know. And, and that is, for me, the real culture and transformation. So if we change mm -hmm. inside of, of ourselves. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I think it's also about, um, for instance, if you take digitalization, so everyone is talking about digital solutions and so on, and I often have the feeling that the technology is... Uh, in, in, in the middle of the discussion, but actually it's about what can it do for, which problems can be solved, what can it do for people. And exactly. I, 
And yeah. I, I think that must be the way to talk about it, no? Not not only it, we need the, a deeper breath, you know, uh, before taking actions because we cannot stop, that's for sure. We cannot stop the economy, we cannot stop the electricity, we cannot stop building, you know. Mm -hmm. But we need somehow to reflect more on what we are doing in order not to create the same problems we have created in the past. So, mm -hmm. But for sure, in the past, we, we were brave uh, to find solutions and so-called mining. Uh, it was just one of the solutions we had, and it solved a lot of problems. That's for sure. I mean, Germany is a real example of, of that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's it's also about, um, and we, we talked about processes um, earlier, um, and then also throughout the day, that this is something you can actually transfer. The solution you cannot always transfer because the conditions are different. But then what can we learn from transformation, from structural change, and where can we apply it um, yeah. other in, in, in other areas? And, and that's actually something the new European Bowers is, is also looking at. So how can we find these demonstrators and then use it in, in situations where we have similar conditions? No? Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. So at the, at the end of this, Torsten, this, uh, how long will you be here? Like... Uh, tomorrow as well, or uh, uh, I think it's uh, midnight. Midnight we start um, our bus, um, and for we go f four hours um, to vice versa. Okay, okay. Yes. You, mean, you mean the midnight of Monday, or uh, no, <laughs> the midnight um, from today? Yeah, oh. yes. Y um, you will lose the best time. Mm -hmm. So, so, and what what is your like resume? Um, I, as far as I understood, uh, like the festival thing could could also something. But in terms of cultural change, is, are there other examples in in Weißwasser and and your area? I mean, you mentioned the the UNESCO uh, heritage sites, no? Um, but but do you are there other things that could actually help to to uh, achieve the the structural change? Yeah, it's. Um Because festivals are quite uh, for the younger, no? Uh, that's ah, we talk about um, also. Oh, Enrico Enri um, was saying no. No, um, <laughs> our our view is um, people uh, between 22 to 40. Uh, <laughs> this was um, yeah, um, the resume. target group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. This group, um, but. Um, I'm a little bit older, um, like 40. I hope I can go to the festival <laughs> next year. Um, um, but um, yeah. Rico can as well. Yeah. So. You are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay. Yeah. These are the, the people we look um, for the festival and um, for our area. Yeah. Enrico, you wanted to say something? Yeah, it's a festival is not only for the, for the younger people. Uh, uh, last week, I, I have a lot of calls of. Um, Older people, over 50, they ask uh, today or, or this year, can we also have a, a one-day ticket for people over 50? Mm -hmm. So and, wow. and, and everyone was asking. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not at this age. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, please, please uh, look at the internet or, or call it the Mad Festival. Uh, it's it's also interesting for older people. I think it's they, they want to have a look what their kids uh, are doing here. Uh, but but it's it's interesting for 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 more generation, not only for the youngest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, um, so I, I think there were a lot of good points in terms of our overall topic of today, the, the culture of transformation, um, using uh, either festivals or images of the future that we, that we reproduce, um, and uh, at the same time, all what we talked uh, in, within the New European Bauhaus uh, today, uh, how can we foster the, the transformation in mind as well, um, and... Um, I thank you very much for the discussion so far. I think uh, there were really some good points to take with. I hope to visit the... the do we already have a, a working name for your festival? Um, no, it's um, uh, a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's um, says, yes. um, Heart of Glass huh? and um, Biela Woda. This is uh, the Sorbian language mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. area. Um, this is the title for working, the working title. title And um, I don't know, is it the, the name of a festival or maybe we have a, another one. This is the next step in maybe two weeks. Yeah. We come together in, in Weißwasser and um, 
we want to um, speak about the, the name and the next steps. Okay, yeah. okay. So we're really looking forward to the invitation if it's taking place. And uh, I wanted to thank you all for the session today. Okay. Enjoy the, the festival. Um, and yeah, have a good summer, so to say. Thanks also for you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.